Um, so motion two dimensions. The first thing we're going to start with is classic relative motion problems. So in this case, we've got a 30 meter wide river. Uh, it is flowing north to south, four meters per second. And this guy's going to try and cross by crossing perpendicular to the current here. Uh, he normally swims with a velocity of three meters per second. In this case, he's going to try and head this way, but what's going to happen? So yeah, in this case, if you look, you could actually do the three, four, five, the hypotenuse of five meters. So he's heading five meters per second at some sort of angle here. So he's never really actually going to head straight across. Turns out we could figure out that angle, and I will have you figure it out later, but he's going to be heading off in that direction due to the combination of his velocity and the current's velocity. OK, so a couple questions on this. Uh, first one says, how long does it take him to get across? Well, let me ask you a question. So this journey's not going to last forever. Is it not going to last forever because of the motion in this direction or because of the motion in this direction? Which one actually determines when this journey is going to end or that this journey will end? Yeah, the horizontal direction in this case. So when you're dealing with two-dimensional problems like this, and we'll see it again with projectile motion, one of the most important things and often the very first thing you need to find is time. And so in this case, you have to decide which direction actually is going to determine so when this is going to end. In this case, it's the horizontal direction in this case. And we'll treat this completely separate. So what horizontal displacement does he need to undergo? Yeah, he's got to cross 30 meters here. So what's, his, what's the horizontal component of his velocity? Yeah, three meters per second. So and in this case, is there any acceleration? No, what's the only equation we have then? If there's no acceleration. Yeah, displacement equals velocity times time. If we rearrange this and solve for time, what would time equal? So excellent, do it in your Z. Uh, in this case, it'll equal delta x over v, which is 30 meters over 3 meters per second, which is going to get us, like you said, 10 seconds. And so now that we know the time of the journey, we can answer any other question thrown at us. In fact, what's the next question that is thrown at us here? How far downstream uh, is he when he reaches the other side compared to where he started? So if he ends up right here, and had he gone straight across, he would have ended up here. I want to know how far downstream he is here. So what am I really asking you to solve for? Good, but in the vertical, or in this case, we could call it the y direction or something like that. So in this case, do we have any acceleration in the north-south direction? No, so I'll call it delta y in this case, but we're just going to have delta y equals vt, and maybe I should have signified that it's delta y equals vy. Delta x is only the component of the velocity in the x direction. So in this case, now that we know the time, we're good to go. So what is the velocity in the y direction again? And the total time of the journey? Awesome. He is 40 meters downstream. <coughs> what, but it makes sense because the velocity in the, in the vertical north-south is greater than the velocity in the east-west. So, OK, so now my other question related to you. It's not on your hand out there, but it just FYI. So what is his vector velocity? What is the net velocity he has during this journey? So when you already gave me the magnitude, what was the magnitude? Five. Five meters per second. How did you get that so quickly? Use the triangle. Yeah, you're just saying you got a right triangle here. So here's three meters per second this way. You got four meters per second this way. And so the overall velocity vector here would be the hypotenuse. And it's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. We could do the Pythagorean. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 16 and 9 is 25, and squared of 25 is indeed 5. Cool. How do I get the direction here? Good. Use the arc tangent. So in this case, we could say that tangent theta equals y over x, or theta equals the inverse tangent of y over x. And notice when you do this this way, inverse tangent of y over x, it always gets you the angle with respect to the horizontal. So, and again, our y is 4, our x is 3. If we want to do some positive, negative type stuff, we could. I'm going to leave this as absolute values since we're doing things in north, south, east, west, rather than positive x, positive y, negative x, negative y. So somebody get me an answer for that. Does 
Does that make sense? <clears throat> yeah, if these were exactly equal, what would the angle be? Or sorry, if these were exactly equal, what would the angle be? 45. But since this is a little more in the y, it should be a little bigger than 45. That makes perfect sense. So in this case, his net velocity vector uh, is 5 meters per second, 53.1 degrees. And how would we describe the, where that 53.1 degrees is? Because keep in mind that with the way this problem is worded, this is north, this is south, this is west, this is east. So you could call it southwest, you could call it, uh, in this case, oftentimes the way it's worded is, in this case, it is south of west. So, so 53.1 degrees south of west. It's probably the most common way you'll hear it. If we said west of south, would that still be true? No, because west of the south, this is the south mark, west of south would be this angle, not this one. That's why we've got to be careful, south of west. <clears throat>